Hello and welcome to Drunk Talk, the Lord of the Rings podcast book club for people who like Lord of the Rings, like podcasts and hate feckin' book clubs. This is going to be episode two where we discuss the prologue. I say we, I mean your host Ross, um, usual suspects Bull McCabe, Owen the Star Duffy and my little brother Oshin. Um, we are going to discuss concerning hobbits, concerning pipeweed, the ordering of the Shire and the finding of the ring. I think that is what it is. We meant to do this actually in the first podcast but we got too drunk. Um, well I did anyway and I ended up being a really bad host. So please sit back and enjoy the absolute ramblings of people who are deep into their cans, deep into their wine and absolutely rambling all over a place doing the best that we can to discuss Lord of the Rings and Ralph Ralph Bakshi if you're listening I actually love you man uh, let's not have any beef um, and yeah reach out to us and maybe we can get you on the podcast okay enjoy bye <laughs> Alright, the boys are lit, the boys are lit, Gondor calls for ale. Welcome back to the second part of Concerning Podcasts, it's the first of many Drunk Talk podcasts. How are the lads, how are you getting on? Great. <laughs> getting on. Yeah, <laughs> very good, very so, good. So, I, I think since that first uh, segment went so well, we can only enjoy the rest of this podcast now. Put the feet up, like, well, this is it's it. clearly going to be a success yes, after you've listened yeah. to that, so... Yeah, I quit my job on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. Are we drinking new drinks? Yeah, I'm. I'm on a new tipple here. I've changed to the illustrious Coors Light from a bottle. So, um, the the second half of the podcast here, we're going to concentrate a little bit on um, the actual book, if we can, uh, particularly the prologue concerning hobbits. Um, so I assume everyone has done their homework question if you've done yeah, your homework yeah yeah I've read that maybe twice in the past week just to oh, make okay, sure man. I'm fresh with it I have a general idea yeah. of what's going on and the Bull McCabe were you too busy chasing yanks from your field or did you actually <laughs> do the homework I've done my homework <laughs> seven times over I read it and then I listened to it and then I listened to yeah, it again da. yeah 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 <laughs> look at this fella and uh, Onar did you did you get the homework in I did yeah yeah um, so the the first two chapters well would you call them chapters um, of the prologue I've been listening to um, to audiobooks and I've been reading um, reading all I should be so yeah that, let's just fucking chat show you a bit now yeah well Owen let's go straight to you then uh, the first thing that stood out to me hold on uh, hold on why didn't Oshin slag Owen for listening to audiobooks because he's a man of the people. Yeah, because Owen Duffy's a more likable <laughs> character. People will know already that Owen Duffy's sounder than you somehow. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Owen Duffy hasn't got notions, pretensions of upper class mobility. You know, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm the sound man. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Who here owns a house? Oh, the silence is deaf. Man. Yeah. Fuck you, bull. Fuck you, bull. Fucking higher class. Anyway. Bastard. Yeah. Anyway. Middle class. Uh, listen, if they're all higher compared to us. There's, I haven't gone up at all. I'm, I'm gone sideways. Well, uh, sideways quicker than anyone else. And it's annoying that you own your own house, and my rent is still probably twice as much as your mortgage. And that's how fucked Ireland is, people. Well, my mortgage uh, is now dead because Ulster Bank is dead. Oh sweet, free gaff! I don't know how free economics gaff, work, yeah. but it sounds like a free gaff. Oh, they sold you. They sold you after some American conglomerate, probably. <laughs> That'll only work out for you, surely. But anyway, listen, lads, let's go back to the topic at hand. I'm going to start with you, Owen Duffy, uh, man of the people, the general to his friends. <laughs> uh, what stood out to me in the, in the prologue was how Tolkien was writing this as if it was part of our history. It didn't say, come across. He was talking to us directly almost like this thing was real you know so I'm, I'm going to take him at his word there and ask you have you ever met a hobbit now uh, we're in dangerous territory here this is where I'm at my most comfortable <laughs> 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 insulting people to their face yeah. his speciality should 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 we dive into this or 
Oh, dive away. Head first. Dive away. Get get your little chlorine goggles on. What's the little chlorine pug you put all over yeah, your nose? Yeah, yeah. You know what? Put that on. Get your Speedo cap. Dive in. Vaseline yourself. In. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all lathered and sauce. Yeah, but we're, we're talking about, you know... Nose is an, is an acceptable answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I haven't, no, but uh, I've, ex- right. I've experienced you've people ne- that are You've never similar. been down the back of the garden thinking one was rushing by in the co- glimpse you've of her in the corner. Like right. Yeah, exactly, exactly, Oshin. you never seen it like you were looking over a badge set, uh, a badger set, <laughs> and, uh, you know, a little, little, you know, good-natured, but not necessarily good-looking face popped out and then popped back and in. And one of your many strolls up the old road for, yeah. uh, for well, a, like, an evening stroll well uh, leprechauns are real first of all now we're getting to they're, it now we're getting they're, to they're, it they're a cousin of of the uh, the hobbits i think okay and, yeah so you have know, you seen a leprechaun like uh, leprechauns in in ireland they're, they're quite good at you know n- not wanting to be seen they're they have magic powers uh, yeah invisible. very similar lots of gold um, now, that, you, now you're getting to that's it that's the thing about hobbits like People say they're not magical creatures. They just, if they don't want to be seen, they won't be because they're, like you know, very good at hiding and burgling yeah. and, and that kind of thing. I mean, car- cards on the table here. You know, we're we're all country boys. Maybe maybe Owen, I'd consider you a bit of a townie, and uh, maybe a little bit less of a links to the countryside. But where we grew up, you know, cornfields were like you know a hundred meters from the house, and we would go running around in the countryside on train tracks that were disused and this kind of thing. So. I feel like you know we're from the country, so we can speak with some kind of authority on all th- all things country and hobbits and leprechauns. I mean, there's definitely similarities there. You know, what do you think, Ocean? Have you ever met a hobbit? I, when I was reading the prologue, I thought how he described them was a bit like how we would describe the Bull McCabe to our listeners. Good natured rather than beautiful. <laughs> Just you know, you know what? Oh Shin, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. No. Bright eyed, red cheeked. Is that not the is that not the best insult you've ever heard yeah. in your life? I for one am gonna take this on. It's like, oh what what does Owen Duffy look like? Oh, well he looks good natured. <laughs> <laughs> he means well. <laughs> that is He tries his best. Rather than Just, beautiful. You know. That's incredible. And the can't grow beards, which again Owen Duffy. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I think we've all met a hobbit. He's on this. He's yeah. on this podcast. Six meals a day. I remember that man was eating t- six chicken breasts every ten <laughs> seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the glory years. Second breakfast is the most important meal of the day. He never gave me presents, though. I mean, hobbits give away presents easily. He never gave me only time. the rich hobbits. That takes us on nicely there. Um, Ocean, can you explain to us what a, what a motham is? Oh God, yeah. We're, a motham in their world it seems they, they have relics that they don't want to throw out some of them that looks cool maybe but they've no use for it and they don't want to throw it out i was thinking like what are mothams in everyday life i've uh, so it's basically hobbits are all hoarders yeah it seems to be and they can't get rid of anything they don't want to throw it away because they might have a use for it but Probably they have won't. a particular word for something that you hoard. Yeah. And it, it's a moth. Yeah. Just museums full of shite. Yeah. I, I was reading it earlier and thinking, what are ours? And the only thing I could find in my house are, you know, like a shopping bag from Tesco. You know, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I literally yes. bag for life. A cupboard full. I won't get, I won't get blown the cave talking about cupboards. But you see, you use that, Oshin. I don't know if that counts as a mad No, no. Because you're using no, it. No, it's not a mad. It is. They're in the corner. They're in the press. I oh, never use them. Bag press. And they just keep adding and adding oh, to it. Oh yeah, that the bag press, press where you put all the bags. Yeah, yeah. And just we should explain to our international audience what we mean when we say press. Press the cupboard. Yeah. Oh, no, don't get bull back on about cupboards. <laughs> 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 well, don't get them started about hot presses. Jeez, this is a whole nother uh, podcast. Yeah. So, uh, Owen, what, what's your motham? I'm um, like, I would say my. What was it? A motham? Right. Motham. Um, so I was, in, I was in first class, right? And the school was doing a, a raffle. And in... A what? A raffle. Like a, everyone picks a ticket? Yeah, everyone gets job. a ticket. I don't know if we, if we paid for this ticket or they just gave them out, right? But I was... Uh, well, what would you be in first class? Six, six years old? I was five years old. Yeah, because yeah, I Bull was eight, eight in fairness. But yeah. And in 1996, Meath won the All-Ireland. And I won yeah, a ball. 
uh, an O'Neill's ball signed by the entire Mead team of 1996 that won the All Ireland. Now, no way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so oh, wait, you're talking. You're talking Tommy oh, Giles. Tommy, Trevor Giles. They were there. Th- th- a few of them were there signing it while I was there as well. So titans among men. I was a part of history. Right. Unbelievable. Um, I'm jealous. Um, that's not. I suppose that is. But, it is useless. It's, it's, yeah. For, it's for how many years now? For fifteen or sixteen years, or however many years it is, it's been sitting in my house. I haven't touched it, but I'm not, never going to get rid of it. So. Oh, I love sport momentums, though. I mean, wow. I don't have any of them, but I like their idea. Yeah, I don't have any here. I don't have any. What? And so uh, that is a good so cool one. Is that is that a, a modem? Uh, Something I don't use, but I'll never throw. I mean, away. I think yeah, it is. is it is. You're, the, yeah. you're the expert on this. You're not using it, but you're never going to get rid of it. Yeah. So that's mine. Okay. Right. Very good. Very good. It's certainly better than Ushin's, yeah, which yeah. was just crap answer. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he brought it up. Uh, what about you, um, uh, the Bull McCabe? My madams are cardboard boxes that we get in from the post. You know, you you get something from Amazon. Oh, you cash. get something from the shop. I keep the box. You never know when you might need that box. Keep the I'm box in the shed. My shed's full of boxes. Oh, just yeah, recycle yeah. it, Paul. I know what you mean. I'm sure Ross has a better answer than that because that was as depressing as mine. So what's yours, Ross? My madam, uh, well, listen, Owen, it's, it's locked down here in Ireland and it has been for 11 months, almost a year at this stage. So I'm genuinely thinking, you know, the, the, the madams that I have are my trousers. <laughs> I mean, Never I wear work, them. I work remotely. I'm on Zoom every day. I can't remember the last time I had to wear a pair of suit pants. Yeah. So I mean, it's coming to that stage where maybe, maybe the madams in my house are something I'll never throw away in case I have to go outside, which I know I never will. <laughs> That's it. It's a, pa- a pair of fucking trousers. There you go. Really, more more than anything else. Other than that, maybe I don't know. I have a lot of video game consoles, and I have the same game on several of them. For example, I have a, a Super Nintendo and then a Switch, which has all them Super Nintendo mm. games anyway. You're definitely a hoarder of consoles, though. I don't think I've ever yeah. met anyone that has more consoles than you and games. I told you, I don't, I don't have many friends. Yeah, it's, it's just, I just like playing the video. It's the same with DVDs it. now. You have all these DVDs on your shelf, but you'll just end up watching that film on Netflix or Amazon. But you never know when the internet might die. You never know. Yeah. You never know. You never know. If the know. internet dies, I'm more worried than if my DVD player stops working. Like. Yeah, you don't have to worry, Oshin, because if the internet dies, you just come round to my house. <laughs> <laughs> I think keeping the Before old consoles allowed. is important too, because like that shit is like analog. You know, that yeah, shit will run true. with a, on a toaster. <laughs> you know, it doesn't need the fucking smart TV. Maybe there's you know, a you dynamo pull that out. On the bike. It's classic. That shit lasts. Mm. You know, if it's good, it's good forever. That ain't no exactly what you mean. It's also like gold. Like it just gets way more expensive over time. So you're on a huge investment already. Yeah. You know, I have a 1997 Nintendo 64. You know, beat that. Yeah. Can't beat that. Middle class. Yeah, you're working class. I can't be that. Uh, there he goes, rubbing his affluence in our face <laughs> again. High class. What a scumbag. St. Mary's Park, Highborn. St. Mary's Park. And him across the road in fucking Kluska Park. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I want to deal him in Kluska Park. <laughs> you take that back. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? Yeah, Ashton, Ashton Place. Place, was it? It was, it was a nice wee street. It was like 12 houses. A bit too close to the church. Side the state. You could, I tell you what, you, you could hit the church Absolutely. with a tennis ball. <laughs> That's how you know they're wealthy. Getting that church money, you Proper town. We used to rob Woody towns. Fagan's blind. <laughs> that shop was robbed blind. Ah, oh, so yeah. if Sticky if, fingers. If, if Willie's, sticky if Willie's watching him, I'm very sorry, Willie. That's actually a good question, Owen. Do you think that the hobbits had shops? Ooh, that's... Uh, uh, very good more question. markets or something like. like in the prologue he talks about someone building a workshop like a shed yeah. that sounds like that's just what that person does i imagine like one person does the flower one person does the rope one person does the milk yeah. rather what than a if shop. two people do them if you sell beer from a brewery does that make you a shop no i don't feel like it's a shop. is it just like a self-sustaining sustaining economy that nobody you know trades money it's just services yeah, and yeah, what you're good at so that's what it looks like 
But like well, money can be exchanged for services and goods. One yeah. of the first sentences is Bilbo is very rich. Like, so what does rich mean? He has nice things yeah. in his house, or he has a lot of coin. He just has a lot of stuff. Yeah. You could trade like treasure, with. isn't it? Like treasure. He owns his own house. He's middle class. More madams than anyone else. Yeah, More mad. He's he's madams out the wazoo. Madams out the wazoo. Madam, madams is a fun. It's a fun word to say. <laughs> madam, madam. It's a fun word, and that got me thinking about like uh, they explain a little bit where because yeah, I think we covered it a little bit earlier on where Tolkien was clearly insane, and uh, the hobbits actually didn't speak English or the common speech. They spoke their own thing, and he translated it in his own little mad head into English but some words didn't translate like the word madam and because they had a particular word in the Hobbit language lads I'm going too deep here <laughs> what I meant to say is I found another word that stood out to me in the uh, in the prologue and it's my new favourite number go for it I think it might even be overshooting the prologue here but it ties in nicely with the prologue about how madams is a mad word and my new favorite number is the number 144 and it's because the hobbits have a word for this number 12 by 12 yeah it's a it's a it's a gross, a gross. Still, what is yeah. this why why do they have words a dozen like, dozen it's kind of remind no it, it it's a is it a dozen dozen yeah, is that what yeah. it, 144? 12 by 12 is it a gross or a dose I think it's a gross. Yeah, it's a gross and you're a dose. <laughs> <laughs> you are a dose, huh? She's very good. And it, do you know what? It reminded me of your man, Mongon, who said that in Irish there's 40 words for fields. So, what I was going to say is, lads, what do you reckon the Hobbits, how many words for ale do you reckon the Hobbits have? At least one. <laughs> 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 Probably a few. Like if you walk into a hobbit pub, do you just say, "Just give me the, just give me an ale"? Maybe. What about drought? Draft. Drought. Draft. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot how to speak. Here, actually, why do hobbits have pubs but not shops? That's a good question. Maybe they do have shops, and it's, we're too stupid to know. Did they have actual money or was it just gold that they just like it? Because Bilbo came back from the whole adventure he, he went on in The Hobbit and came back with a chest of gold. Like, did he start their economy from that? Or, like. He didn't, though. He did come back. He did come back with some stuff. No, he came back with like trunks, but he didn't come back with trunks of gold. The gaffer talked about that. Trunk of gold. He came back with one chest of gold, yeah. He did. He definitely had at least a trunk or two. Yeah, yeah. and it smelled like troll. From the trolls, wasn't it? Yeah. They buried it before they went on their adventure. But yeah, I, that's an interesting question. On did they have a money system? Like, if you walk into the pub, right, and you are a thatcher, right, and your job is putting thatch on houses or whatever. Yeah, the fuck. you're hardly going to tell that guy here. Give me two pints there, and I'll fix your roof next week. Yeah, <laughs> there's two pints a meter. Oh no, no, I give you, I give you three pints a meter, and no more. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, like, how does that work? Even like? even in the uh, in the books, like they talk about there was only a, a few there, there was no government or anything like that there was only a few positions that they held and then the rest was just people that had their own kind of skills that they that did what was it there was a mayor who only was about during like festivals and ceremonies um, yeah ceremonies and stuff like that and then there was sheriffs cut the cake yeah, you, now this is now we're getting proper into it we're getting proper into the shire here now this is the ordering of the shire and you know let, let's just get straight into it lads the fuck is going on <laughs> like do they do they have doctors like like who's in charge like what happens if you break your foot what do you do if you're a hobbit they just leave you to die with the foxes yeah. yep you're thrown out you, you gotta remember a fox is like making icon it's like up to, it's as big as like a dire yeah, <laughs> yeah probably them, bigger yeah. you know what I mean like the wildlife like a squirrel is the size of an Alsatian <laughs> yeah so the 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 average size of a hobbit was what was three, it three feet? Yeah, a bit full. Maybe three. It's between two and four. Two, yeah, two and four. They could comfortably be right on the back yeah. of a fox. Though. The tallest hobbit was four and a half, and he could ride a horse. Yeah. Bull roarer, a legendary type figure, which makes me think he wasn't real. Probably not. Pipe dream. I mean, who's the most the most the tallest Irishman of all time is Cú Cullen, and he definitely didn't exist. Yeah, yeah, true. I think my mother could be like a like 
remnants of a hobbit. Like she's about four foot six. She could be your man's daughter. She could be. My, yeah, my wife uh, is very short as well, actually. Very short. Your wifey. Wifey, yeah. It's trying to be nice. Oh. Uh, <laughs> we get no. Uh, she's not your wifey yet. Uh, she gonna be it's just asking now. Americans use lads. I'm trying to be international. Well, 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 we're on the subject of rings. Maybe you know. <laughs> you should buy. Nah, it. stop that. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I was reading that bit about the the positions in the in the Shire, and I read a bit about the bouncer, and I just thought that was class. Like immediately, I thought of Deggy. Now Deggy isn't in the podcast just yet, but Deggy would 100 percent have been a bouncer. Explain the bouncer to me. What is the bouncer? Bound, sir. So they're keeping the boundaries, and they would just beat the bounds. It's like don't be making a nuisance. They're a bit literally don't like bouncing in the, the shower, the, the shower, <laughs> not the shower. The sh- <laughs> bouncing in the shower. That's Deggy. Just chesting someone away. But I, but I have a question about that. Who who makes the rules that they enforce? Uh, apparently no one. No like, one. There's always it, there. It goes family to family. So the books say anyway. Like people resolve their matters personally in their family, and then that's that. So it's all. Just loads of little problems that people are dealing with themselves. It was the rule um, of common sense, though. I thought, no, isn't that what it said? It's like the oh, lads, I've been in the countryside and there's not a tap of common sense. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a question for you. Austin. Yeah. So the the sheriffs are the ones who enforce the law by or large, you know. And there's only twelve of them in the whole fucking country for mm-hmm. some reason. No one wants to right? steal the bread. No one wants. No one. Uh, there's no thieves. You know, <laughs> there are thieves, but there are none. There are no thieves. So, right, they wear a hat uh, that signifies them oh, as a yeah, sheriff. Oh, yeah, because there's the only, no uniform. It, yeah, exactly, no uniform. So the only difference that the sheriff has between the regular hobbit is he's got a feather in his cap. And I just wanted you to explain to me, he's like, where does he get, how big are birds compared to the regular hobbit? How tall is that feather? Is it like his leg? Uh, like, what, I, I what's don't know there, like? if you remember as a kid, when you used to go to them farms, and there'd be like a random peacock walking around and he'd be fucking do, spooky yeah, as yeah. fuck man he'd be looking at him and you don't he'd know look you straight in the eye you don't know what way he's going he's got a lot of feathers and he puffs him up challenging you almost yeah so I, i'm thinking like if they were freaky to me as a kid imagine how freaky they'd be to a hobbit but when i read yeah. sheriff i thought like he'd have a peacock feather so then i start imagining a hobbit fighting a peacock trying to get this better <laughs> off him and I, I went down to dark alley I mean, it'd be like a dragon to him like it's a peacock is bigger than yeah. a hobbit but may, maybe that's that's why that's how you pick who's sheriff if they can defeat a fucking Duck. peacock that's twice their size yeah, yeah. Yeah. to be to get the feather oh, to put him in your hat oh, it's like the it's like the boss level like the coming of age when, when you're 33 or whatever the coming of age age for hobbits is you have to fight uh, well I think we would have seen that though I mean Frodo oh, yeah. of age in the books uh, right? when you see well, the size of the eagles years old is... later in the films like they're pretty big eagles maybe it's one of them feathers but then all yeah, I'm imagining <laughs> imagine is the size of that. You're, you're going down like a little country path and you see a hobbit I mean you don't you see this one feather bobbing up and down the other side of a hedge or something and you're like what the fuck's going on over there and there's this little <laughs> sheriff coming around you know, giving it all that you know you got oh fuck here's the law <laughs> you know you you got to try a farmer maggot's crop or whatever you have in your backpack what way are you picturing the feather like is it's on the side like one of those you know on the, or is it like on the front like one of these 1920s you know, women dancers <laughs> just flapping over oh, like front. Up. oh little zelda fitzgerald yeah yeah like you know is it sticking straight up like a peacock or is it sideways that's the is thing. it in the back like an indian sideways in the cap coming outwards native american is it and uh, like it seems like a system it's, it seems like a system ripe for abuse you know like who picks the sheriffs they're they're the only ones who can enforce the law they can bother it seems like no them. one cared you easy living hobbits just got up to eat food and then go back mm. to sleep there was no ulterior move no law at all like rural mail <laughs> yeah something similar to that once you get past castle bar i hear it like yeah. that out there <laughs> any law is what you make it yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but with, with the sheriffs as well like back your it, it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> yeah, back your cudgels my land that's the bull mccabe coming out now. <laughs> but with, with the sheriffs in the book like it doesn't it doesn't say that they they deal with much you know hobbit matters it's more beasts that come in mm. 
So I, w- what kind of beast did they be dealing with? English beast. Is it wolves? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought he was meant a stray cow that broke out of a field or something. You know, oh, the goats loose from the paddock again, chase him down. Yeah. It's just a one swan, actually. You know, like something like that. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good, very good. It seems like a very unequal society. You know, like they've got super rich families and then people who live in holes in the ground. Yeah, it's pretty real, isn't it? <laughs> mm. That's that bull versus us. Yeah. Yeah. He's up there yeah, living yeah. in the mansion. In yeah. Drahada. <laughs> Where did sorry be? <laughs> <laughs> No, well, I mean, I don't know. I feel like a part of me thinks that the movies, which which we all love, were made by people who who had never never been to the countryside. The way it was perfection, and you know, like where it's just the most idyllic, lovely, perfect place where nothing goes wrong, and there's pubs, but it doesn't matter about pay. And Rosie is drinking uh, with you; she's dancing, and you know there's food and all the spuds are huge and the carrots are lovely and the, the cows are well behaved etc etc well the book has a bit more ambiguousness to it about well like you know Bilbo hates the fucking Shire really yeah. it's not dance around but yeah. he fucking hates it like he can't wait to leave I don't know what do you think do you think that the movies is a bit metropolitan like and they've never been to the countryside glazes over a lot of it where's uh, yeah. Peter Jackson from New Zealand yeah it's yeah. like a New Zealand person uh, picturing Ireland with like an English vibe behind it they've not yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of people I think look at the Irish countryside and because we're from there we can speak with a bit of authority you know I think that it's it's an idyllic lovely place and they, they've no clue about like do you know how fucking racist everyone is there <laughs> absolutely like, they're yeah. not welcoming the outsiders like yeah they'll take your money off you and they'll badmouth the fuck out of you I'm fucking racist to their own people. <laughs> Begrudgers. No, how do, who's this outsider coming in buying houses? Blowins. Fucking blowins. And in fairness, Bilbo got a bit of that. The gossip. That's what I think of when I think of the country is the gossip. Do you know what I didn't like? Even the gossip around Frodo's parents. Yeah, what is yeah. it? Is that well, not, I like it though. I'm not, you know, I, I don't like what they say. Well, I don't own you, explain. Well, uh, as far as I know, they drowned. But some say they were drowned, if that makes sense. Do, 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 do. Well, what some say that he, they fell in because Drogo, Frodo's father, was mm-hmm. too fat. And he, he knocked the boat over because he was too heavy. Capsized. And then some say she he was pushed and then he pulled her in with him. Why were they on a boat? That's cruel. That's but cruel. like, that's just gossip. What if they just drowned by accident? So you wouldn't get that in the movies? No. They no. didn't touch on no. that in the movies at all. No, no. They just made the Shire the most amazing, beautiful place. Just just amazing. And like, listen, I think we've, we've gone through a lot of the prologue right now. And I think just before we finish, let's just kind of close off maybe the last two parts of the prologue. Because we touched on the ordering the Shire there. And I think we covered that fairly well. Uh, you know and it's just a, an idyllic version of Ireland without someone ever having been there and hated it as much as we do so let's talk very quickly about my least favourite thing about this book uh, my least favourite thing about my homework which is concerning pipe weed full disclosure I quit smoking four weeks ago I'm struggling with it so it's not my favourite page and a half uh, Ushin, do you want to talk us through pipe weed? Uh talk you true no but give you my <laughs> thoughts what the when fuck are we was, doing like, when yeah. I was reading it uh, I just thought straight away that Toby Hornblower he lives in his parents basement he is the man <laughs> who <laughs> first off started smoking he lives in a basement somewhere I mean um, well that's that's a good point I mean is it tobacco or is it Mary Jane like what what's the crack here do you think in your I, opinion I think it's both he does say uh, something oh, like Narcissa or no, no, I can't remember what yeah, the, the word Latin was name Nic- Nicotiana yeah. Nicotiana what was that? Yeah, he what did was say that? that yeah Nicotiana was the plant but then he says right. that they smoked other things see that's that's what annoyed me but go on Oshin they, it said like they, that they smoked other things different plants as well different strains so I don't know if that was 
like marijuana or tobacco or what but certainly in the films they make it seem like it's a bit more than just nicotine but I suppose they leave it open to interpretation yeah because I don't think I don't know you don't want to think too hard about you know something small it's only a page and a half but I mean you couldn't get weed when Tolkien was around right bull could you <laughs> I don't know, only the maybe outcast of society, and I don't think he was in the outcast. In the 40s? You're talking to 30s or 40s, like? Could you get weed? I mean, opium would have been the mm. drug of choice back yeah. then, Yeah, right? people would have been in opium then, smoking And that. it's definitely not opium. Like, Sherlock Holmes is big into that, but that's a that's the 1890s. Yeah. I think they were written. I don't know. Like, uh, the, way, the way I've seen it, with the, as soon as I, I read the words, the nicotine, local expert here, folks. The local <laughs> expert here. <laughs> as, 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 from my interpretation, anyway, as soon as I seen the word nicotine, I was like, right, it's it's nicotine, it's tobacco, and they're talking about plants. But then they do go on to say that hobbits, before smoking nicotine, or maybe not before, at the same time, they smoked herbs, and they said some fouler, some sweeter. And to me, that's like, you know, indica and sativa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's my interpretation. That's how I read it. And they were the first to smoke it out of pipes as well. You, yeah. you read what you want to read. That, that's what that's I say. That's exactly, that's, how, that's what, how reading works, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You right. just interpret your, what you want and take it away yourself. So I know I'm skipping ahead two movies, maybe even three movies, and I don't really care. Um, so Saruman says to Gandalf, he's like, you smoke too much of that pipe weed it's dulled your mind right and then when they take over Isengard and they they flood the whole place and they get the wizard locked up in the tower the hobbits find pipeweed in the storehouse so okay. either Grima a worm tongue or what's going on there why, why do you think Saruman was collecting pipeweed I, I don't imagine he let Anton happen in Isengard he wasn't aware of. He was buying it and selling it just for a quick buck. So yeah. he knew it so you well. reckon it was a money spin Yeah, a money, money spinner. Spin you, know, you don't have to agree with something to make money off it. I have a theory, lads. You want to hear my theory? Yeah. Give what us your it? theory. I reckon that he would break Gandalf and be like, oh yeah, what are you doing? You're an addict. You're a scumbag. You're, you're this, that, the other. Right, but secretly, he, he was jealous of, of Gandalf. So he was like, smoking on a free but he didn't know how to inhale <laughs> <laughs> so why, why, how does Gandalf do this how does Gandalf <laughs> <laughs> Gandalf was known as the best smoker going like yeah he'd be pulling whiteies and puking in the corner <laughs> you don't call him Gandalf the white for nothing yeah. <laughs> Gandalf the green <laughs> 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 no, he's gone off the white. He know, he white it out, and then he yeah. came back. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I think Saruman, you know, at the end of the day, he's just, he's just like a little shy Gandalf, and he knew that. Yeah. He yeah. knew that. Want to imitate him? I just love the name of it. Like I think we should just call it smoking. You know, you want to go for an old Toby? No, <laughs> old Toby. Do you know what? You, did you see Wait. the thing that Mary wrote the book on weed? Yeah, it was pretty apt. Yeah. What? Pipe yeah, yeah. Pipe Mary Adoc is the way they he, put it, but it's Mary. Mary wrote the book. He, he wrote the history of it. He gathered of it. all of it apparently. Once he had finished his Merry Travels, came back and brought the lore nice all pun together. There, very nice, very nice. His Merry Travels, I like that. And I tell you what, right? No sheriffs, only a few bouncers. There was no fucking popo knocking down the back of old boys' sheds at the back of Crisp Factory saying you need to shut this fucking weed shop down. <laughs> no. The back of Crisp Factories. What a reference. What's the difference between Old Toby and Long Bottom Leaf? Just a different strain, I think. They're they're all different ones. Pineapple Express, is it? Yeah, something like that. Tastes like a long bottom. So it is it's not the same thing, no? Old Toby is the man that grew them. All right. Oh, here's the expert now. Tobold Hornblower of Longbottom. Right, that was his name. Oh my! Longbottom God. was the area he grew it in, so that's oh why God. it's Longbottom oh Leaf is one name for it. Old Toby is the other name for it, and then there's a couple, a couple more. Give us a bit of Neville there, you know yourself. Fucking, it sounds like fucking Owen Duffy wrote the book. Yeah. This is a chapter I I read a couple of times. <laughs> but, yeah. Secretly called Mary Doc. What an what an what an expert. 
La- ladies and gentlemen, Owen Duffy, <laughs> local tobacco expert. Mary Duffy over here. But we- <laughs> Mary Anna says- Brandy Buck Duffy. <laughs> I still, I still don't want it to be just tobacco. I'll just say that. And if it is, I'm disappointed in your Jay or Tolkien. It sounds like it takes too much of an effect to be tobacco. Yeah. How amazing that the the champion of the light, Gandalf, the Sar- the Sauron, never mind the Sauron, the Sauron of the good and the free men of the West, was an absolute stone. <laughs> it's unreal. It's unreal. No wonder he's always late. Absolutely. Ah, he's, he, his excuse was a wizard is never late. Yeah. He only arrives when he wants. Means to. That's just well, like, there's, on, there's only yeah, one part of the uh, there's only one part of the prologue that we haven't touched on, and we may as well finish that now before we get into the book proper um, in the next podcast, of course. And that is of the finding of the ring, which is mm. essentially the story of the Hobbit. So I've only got one note written down here um, <laughs> from the the prologue that I read earlier on today. So of the finding of the ring, semicolon. Hobbit movies wank. What's going on? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> yeah, what was that all about? Why are they such wank? Just and um, money making, isn't it? Piece they of just money making. Yeah. yeah, they saw Harry Potter make it into fucking seven and a half movies, and they said, "I want that dollar." Mm. But I mean, like they Cha-ching. they made the Lord of the Rings to make money too, right? But they were still awesome movies, so that's not a good enough answer. I think. It, the Hobbit movies came out after Marvel had started I'd say after that whole explosion of superheroes and bad guys in CGI so yeah. they just went down that route CGI was much more used and they like they actually look worse than the Lord of the Rings said. oh good they do I agree yeah like the Lord of the Rings movies will last forever because like you said they, they yeah. use makeup and when mm. you see an orc you see like the blisters on his head like you know yeah. that fella who spits on the rock like he's got a pure tumour hanging off his cheek I love that yeah. fella with half oh, a head oh yeah, yeah your man who's the age of the yeah. human yeah. yeah I love yeah. that fella yeah. well you can say what you want about orc society but they don't take being a burn victim into the interview process you know <laughs> 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 like I mean it's obviously a meritocracy no discrimination there no 100% they're very woke <laughs> no the Hobbit was shite though lads, yeah, it? yeah it was like we've and all like, read the Hobbit we I don't know, know how good it was it is a children's mm. book you know oh, it's, it's an adventure and it doesn't need to be any more gritty than what the book says you know I go as, I go as far to say is the Hobbit is one of my favourite books of all time yeah. I absolutely, absolutely love it is. I absolutely love it I think it's and they, they cut out the best character in Tom Bombadil like they, I don't know how they managed. oh he's in Lord of the Rings Russian. he's in Lord of the Rings is he in the Hobbit? He's not in the Hobbit? Hobbit? No. He's yeah, in no, Hobbit. he's... Oh, right. Well, that's my bad. Whoops. Filthy casual. <laughs> 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 well, lads, I think that's everything now. We're, we fairly uh, rinsed the prologue, and I may say fair play to us. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed this podcast, please feel free to like, subscribe, and share the podcast from wherever you're getting your podcasts. If you want to leave us a review even a one star review let's be honest we're not one star but if you want to leave us a one star review that's actually grand just give some kind of interaction follow us on the social media channels and it's probably enough really today of shy talk from me from own goodbye <laughs> Ball. yeah thanks for tuning in i hope you come back give us all the things that ross said and maybe some money as well please <laughs> and Ocean of Yugos yeah. land somewhere in between them too thanks everyone for listening <laughs> it's been good that's enough from us and go on and we see you next week mm-hmm. bye mm-hmm.